you can make most things by starting with a cube. By hitting Ctrl 2 or 3, you can subdivide the mesh 2 or 3 times. Now go into edit mode. Even though it looks like a sphere, you still have these 8 control points like it's a cube. And that's because, well, it is a cube. By going to the modifier stack, you can click this upside down triangle, and that'll make our 8 control points sort of just take form of that sphere. Now, it looks more like a sphere, but we have the control points of a cube. Now we're in a good place. We can pretty much start modeling anything we want. I usually start with one of my favorite tools, the loop cut. The loop cut can add geometry where there is none, in sort of a loop or ring fashion, if you will. And then just by using our standard Blender Toolkit, I'm talking about move, scale, and rotate, we can start pushing and pulling these loops into position to start shaping the object we're trying to make. Using the Extrude tool is going to be one of the best options you have here, but sometimes it can be a little unpredictable in the way it morphs and bends the mesh, just in a way you might not be expecting it to. Try to make your extrusions shorter and more precise. Here I'm deleting the faces at the top of this blade so I can re-add them with better topology, just so the edges flow a little nicer and there's less pinching. Now it's time to start scaling down those edges and making our blade nice and sharp. Like we talked about before, I'm gonna drop a loop cut right down the center of this blade. That's gonna help me get a little more control right around the handle of the blade and down the center. And now we're just in the business of pushing and pulling. Again, this is a game of experimenting. Because we have so few vertices, it's so easy just to grab, push, pull, play around with shapes until you find something you like and think is pretty cool. And here we have another loop cut going down the side of the blade this time actually, just to give the edge some sharpness. Remember that loop cut we dropped down the center of the blade? I'm gonna use that to sort of bevel out a center section. Using Control B on an edge, you can pull out a bevel. I'm gonna use this to dig into the center of the blade to give it a stylized look. This would help if I decided to give it reflections in the material later in the process. Another amazing feature of this workflow is that if you struggle with edge flow, you always have the option to add another piece of mesh directly inside the object to create other parts. I'm going to use this to create sort of a display or design near the bottom of the blade here. As you can see, this is a totally separate piece of mesh that I'm just manipulating, moving, rotating, scaling, adding edge loops, extruding, whatever I need to do to create an interesting shape I can do to this mesh and it's totally non-destructive to the other piece. Like we talked about before, here I can just make small extrusions, just little extrusions at a time, in order to carefully and precisely build the shape I intend to. And now I can just slide that design right back into the handle of the blade, and look how nicely it fits. Some minor tweaks to sort of push and pull things where they need to be, and then I can just rotate, duplicate it, and flip it to the back side of the handle so it's on both sides. And now, we have a piece that's so well integrated with both sides of the blade, we can now move on to other places. I'm gonna experiment here under the handle, but as you can see I decide ah, I don't really like how this looks. So I decided against that and I went for a different method here. It just goes to show how easy it is to use this method to push and pull shapes around until you find something you really like. Right now I'm using the proportional editing tool to tuck that piece back under the handle just a little bit more. Now that we've completed the design here and the guard, we can spend the remainder of the time focusing on the handle and the pommel of our sword. I'll try not to sound like a broken record here, but it's really important to get the message across that the main tool of destruction here is our edge loop tool. It's really helping me add more shapes and add more contour to any design that I create, whether it's a sword, uh, an animal or a person, or even a rock or a tree or something natural. Pretty much anything that flows in shape and is curvy, I always use this method for design and I always use edge loops to go about it. Here I'm just putting the final touches on the pommel. As you can see, it's not really been anything more than just playing around with shapes. I'm just pushing, pulling, extruding, trying to find something that looks cool, something that I like. And here we have it, the demo scene that I created. You know, this sword started from a cube. You watched it come together, and this is my favorite way of modeling. It's my favorite way of creating something. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed this. Follow me over on Instagram. I'm always sharing my client work and some of my personal work over there and just some of my everyday life. But more importantly, I like seeing what you guys make and what you guys send to me. So drop a comment here, subscribe, hit me up on Instagram, and I'll catch you next time.